Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, well, uh, my next guest, well, their lead singer has described them as the loudest folk band in the world. They've been together for nearly 30 years, sold over 130 million albums, won a record 22 Grammys, and are in the country for their first national tour in eight years. On stage, as we speak in Brisbane, I had the pleasure of catching up with them yesterday for an exclusive chat with Larry Mullen Jr., Edge, Bono, and Adam Clayton. You two! <laughs> We've always had this idea that, you know, rock and roll can change the world. Just mm. that hair, right? That, yeah. I, I wish I had it now, but it's <laughs> actually, there was a very high wind happening. I always felt like a bit of a charlatan and not quite, uh, you know, right for, for rock star and that it was perhaps wasted on me. Very good, I think. On the, on the, as we speak, the eve uh, of your, your Australian tour, the first one in eight years, how does it feel to be back? Well, I was just saying there, it, it turns out it's not like riding a bike. <laughs> and uh, you can fall off, and it could be interesting the first night. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is, you should, there's something you shouldn't get too good at. Um, so you do still get nervous? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, I, I want to throw up. One man comes in the name of love. One man come and go. Now, you guys are, uh, are very close to, depending on how you want to look at it, 30 years in the industry. Do you guys see yourselves as being a bit of, you know, the elder statesman of, of the rock industry? It depends on what time of day. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, early mornings sometimes, but uh, by the time we're on stage, no way, no way. We can hold our own against any young group. In fact, yes. I, mean, I thought it was apparent kick that ass. we were um, doing everything we possibly could to defy gravity, and I'm <laughs> sorry that it's not working for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's time for the men to see off the boys. Now, the clip for The Saints Are Coming, I, I, I think, sends a very powerful message, and I would assume that's an intentional thing. And do you, do you often wonder or, or worry about making too much of a political statement at times? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you better answer that. You're in, yeah, well, you know... You're up, you're up your neck in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, coming from Ireland, sometimes it's a little difficult to go into somebody else's country and start... And stop the speech. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you know, Probably we really should have. <laughs> yeah, we never thought of that. Well, if I didn't know any better, I'd say some of your uh, political, political activist work is rubbing off on edge. Yeah, well, you we've know, always, though, as a band, we've always had that political awareness. You know, we, we grew up in an era where politics and music were all the one, you know. The Clash were the band that we looked up to a lot, and Bob Marley. You know, it was, that was, there was no separation really you just put everything into your songs John Lennon was a big inspiration I mean religion and politics are the two things you're not supposed to talk about at the table mm. that's all we talked about in our house mm. and it seems to be all our Irish people talk about when they're at the pub I mean it's, it's the U2 thing it's not it's not really it's very natural to just who we are as people and we've always had this idea that you know rock and roll can change the world you know e even if it's just changing the temperature of your bedroom, you know what I mean, or it certainly changes the way you, you see out your bedroom window at the world, you know, it did to me, as I was growing up 15, 16, I just listened to John Lennon, as I just say, and I thought, wow, you know, everything is possible, and uh, when I got this music in my head, you feel everything's possible, and, and so much more is possible than you imagine. Larry, can I be back to the day you put the, the ad in to, to get all the band together, that first day when everybody turned up to your house? What was, what was it like? Just tell me who were the best just, guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I, I mean, it was a punt. You know, it was like my old man was tired of hearing me bashing um, away upstairs on my own. And um, just one afternoon he said, look, why don't you just go into school, stick a notice on the board, and see if anyone turns up. And um, and I did. He was hoping for a jazz band. He was though. looking for a jazz band. <laughs> um, and I think. 
you can just imagine Larry. Just with the brushes, just mm-hmm. every now and again. Would have been good. I, I think he would have been happy as well. Now, but I heard you wanted to be a guitarist initially. You, did, or did you walk in and just go, I'm going to be the lead singer here? I don't care no, who no, came no, up no, with the no. idea. I just wanted to lead guitar, lead singer, manager, <laughs> <laughs> roadie, you know, anything, it's anyway. The lead bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably right. You know, I, I did try to play lead guitar, which was, which was a bit sad. But um, luckily enough, we were just... It's just the beginning of punk rock, where lead guitar um, wasn't a, uh, an issue. So you could, you know, I might, there might have been a chance I could get in there. But 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 Edge was very easy uh, with it all. And he, he, you know, he see Edge is not the guy to shove in front of you and say no. He he just waits for you to fall on your face, <laughs> and then he goes, oh, okay, well, maybe I could try that. Shall, shall I try that? <laughs> So after a tour like this, been touring for so long, after so many years as well, you probably know each other better than you would know yourself. For example, like who would be, who would be, uh, who's got the strangest quirk in the group? Not Any weird quirk. habits or anything like that? Eccentric? Yeah. Eccentric us. You, or are you just all equally nuts? Uh, yeah. I think I'm starting to, to realise that I've always thought that uh, Adam, uh, Edge, and Larry were all very eccentric. That I was, I wasn't, and I, I really, I mean, I genuinely thought, and and now I'm starting to think that I'm either catching it, um, or no, no, actually, I wake up and I, like something happens, like strange things, like my tea arrives at the wrong temperature, and I'm going like that. I, said, I would never do that before, or or you know, I think I might be catching some of this thing, like rock I, star disease. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's uh, people, you know, it's uh, very contagious. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's, so I, I think it might be happening. I think we might be all getting a bit odd. Well, how do you guys deal? I mean, obviously Bono's got a lot of his own stuff going on. How do you guys, as, as a band, deal with with him off gallivanting, saving the world? Um, I, I think we're very lucky to have someone who does it so well and so elegantly. Um, Elegant. It's elegant. That's it's nice. I just like the, the, yeah. the fact we got the word gallivant and elegant together <laughs> within a couple well, of minutes. Yeah, no, it's just, I mean, it, it's obviously not an easy thing to do. And Bono is very good at doing it. And that's, and it's just, it's great to have someone in your band that can actually do that. Because it's, it's something that collectively we all kind of support. But... You know, somebody actually has to go and do it, and, and he's the man to do it, and he's good at it. It's just worth remembering that the reason I get to see popes and presidents and politicians is not because uh, they're listening to our music. It's because they're listening to our audience. They're afraid of particularly the age group 18 to 30 which is the rock audience a lot of the time. And that's the people who often haven't made up their mind where they're going to vote. And so they're, they, they want to placate me because they want to placate our audience. That's what's going on. That's, that's really what's going on. So let's say, let's say that first meeting at Larry's place, it was a complete cock up. You all hated each other. Everybody went their separate ways. What would you each be doing, do you think? I'd probably be playing rhythm guitar, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Bono would be a one-man band somewhere. Yeah. I, I, I think we'd have gone back the next day. <laughs> <laughs> what would you have done? Would you... Uh, I think we'd have gone back the next week and done it again. You know, what else were we going to do? Gardening? See, me, Zookeeper. I'd be a Zookeeper. Zookeeper's good. What about you, Edge? Mm-hmm. What would you have done? Um... I don't know. Uh, whatever it would be, it would not be as interesting, that's for sure. A big thank you, you too. Nice thank you very much. My pleasure. That was great. <laughs> you carried me, that's not the night. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Absolutely. The boys are... Uh... Vertigo Tour is in Brisbane tonight, of course. Sydney, Tulsa, Australia this Friday, Saturday, with tickets still available for Monday. Adelaide's Amy Stadium on the 16th, Melbourne's Telstra Dome, 18th and 19th. And, of course, for those of you in New Zealand, Auckland at the Mount Smart Stadium, November 24th and 24th. <laughs>
Most shows are sold out, but daily uh, tickets are online at uh, koppel.com.au, so check that out. And also their uh, new CD, U2 18 Singles, is out with that wonderful photo on the cover. That's great. Out November 18. A big thank you to the boys again, U2. Well